Welcome to These Are the Blades of Our Lives, the figure skating show where I talk to you about figure skating like it is drama for our mamas. And of course, it is time to recap the 2024 World's Figure Skating Championship. Guys, this event had me feeling bipolar. I went to the heights of heights of joy in the pits and pits of despair. I was all over the place because of this event. But I want to start at the heights of heights of joy, starting with the pairs. I had said a while back that pairs was in the process of growing. I admit that a few years ago, pairs looked rough. It looked it looked rough, guys. But I had said that Pairs is in the process of growing. That a lot of these teams, they didn't have any chance of top 10 finish, a podium finish, a title. So there wasn't the motivation there for them to work hard, for them to thrive. But with the absence of the Russians, you now have this opening where it was anybody's game, where anyone could come in and take it if they wanted to. And I said that these teams now sensing this opportunity, they would come and they would grow and they would build because they would get used to winning and they would not want to give up that feeling. And that is exactly what we saw with the pairs at this event and I could not have been happier. I mean there was just there was so much goodness to dissect. I'm going to start with the Americans. So the Americans ended up, you know, losing their three spots because unfortunately the three teams that came, two of them did not add up to 13 points. So now the US has two um two spots for the world, which is going to be in the U.S. So, mm, that. But um, Ellie Kane and Danny O'Shea, they were the top performing American team here. I've always said that Ellie and Danny have beautiful lifts, nice in between skating. The side-by-sides, the throws, not their strength. Then we also had, like, in 12th place, Emily Chen and Spencer Akari Howie. This is a pair that I do think has potential. Spencer is coming back from injury. But even though he's coming back from injury, he performed really well, both in the short and in the long program. Again, the side-by-side, -side, the throws, again, is a weakness for them that they definitely have to work on. Then we move on to Anastasia um, Golubeva and Hector Giotopoulos Moore. Yes, that's right. I tackled the name, Giotopoulos. Um, so, yes, yeah, so Hector G. Moore. This is a team that has a very juniorish feel to them, a very juniorish packaging. Their twist really needs to be worked on. It's, it's sort of like side where she's always hitting him on the shoulder instead of like being over his head and him catching her at the, the um, waist. If they could work on the twist, because all the other factor is there. Their side-by-side -side jumps is really good. Their lifts is good. Their throws are good. It's just that twist is so wonky that they definitely need to work on it. However, they did well enough here to finish in 10th place, which means they managed to get two spots um, next year. I don't know if they have two teams that could use two spots, but they do have two spots. And then the heartbreak started. It started with the Italians. We have three wonderful Italian teams. Only two could be here at Worlds. We were desperately hoping that the Italian two teams could come up to like, you know, 12, 13, 13 points or less so that we can get three spots for next year's world. Unfortunately, that did not happen. Um, to start with, you know, um, Lucretia Bacardi and Matteo Garizzi, they had a pretty good outing in the short program. It was one of their best short programs to date. Every element was landed. They were doing good. 
came back in the free program again. There was no major glaring mistake, but it was not their best performance. And unfortunately, those two performances combined, we were left with a ninth place finish. But again, this is a pair that is relatively new. This is a pair that is growing. What will they be able to do next season now that they are the European champion, having tasted what it feels like to be at the very top of the podium? Are they going to go back? Are they going to be motivated? Are they going to work harder and come back even stronger? Then in eighth place, and with their eighth place finish, they are they were able to secure three spots again for Canada is Leah Pereira and Trent Machard. Again, this is a team that's got good elements, but like I've said before, nothing that stands out. Nothing wow. And I think because none of their elements have that wow factor, their twist is good, it's not great. Their side by side is good, it's not great. Their throws are good, it's not great. Their lifts is good, it's not great. What they need is that wow factor packaging and program. They need the external factor to lift up the internal factor. They need to be packaged to the T. They need to have a program that connects with the audience, that connects with the judges, and more importantly, that allows them to connect with each other. That is the only way I see this team progressing and going higher up the ladder. If not, they're going to end up being stuck in that eighth place, you know, position that they found themselves here. Now, I am going to say that I am very surprised at the placement of the Georgian team, Anastasia Meltenkina and Luca um, Berulova. After the short program, they were in fifth place, which, again, shocked me. Because when I saw Queen of 40% herself, Iteri Tuberetsi, I automatically assumed the judges were just going to give Anastasia and Luca the medal. Now, let me just take a moment. I forgot the name of the coach, but there is another coach. He's, he's also a Russian coach, and he's had a lot of, like, junior pairs. He's never been able to really transition from, like, being a junior coach to being a senior coach. Usually his junior pairs, they break apart, somebody get injured, whatever. Anastasia and Luca is actually his first real successful senior pair. Even though they did compete on the junior, but I've already rented about that. Can you imagine being this coach and working so hard for so many years and finally getting a senior pair? And then Queen of 40% Iteri Tuberesi just came in there and it's like, I'm the head coach now. Guys, I don't even like doing like group work because I hate other people stealing my work and effort. Could you imagine how he feels sitting in the kiss and cry with Iteri Tuberetsi like she did some coaching when he knows he did all the work? And then the irony, the irony of Putin over there struggling with his invasion while Iteri Tuberetsi, queen of the 40%, strolled up to the Georgian Figure Skating Federation and she was like, this is pretty, I'm taking it. It's mine now. Invasion completed. Georgia is mine. I'm just sitting here like, who says that forcing children to eat three shrimps, putting them on 60 medication doesn't pay? Who says 60 medication, including three heart medication, one which is a banned substance, and countless broken hips, wrists, back, and knees does not pay. Not Iteri Tuberetsi. She's got her own new federation while Russia is out, and she's got a show where she could fat shame people and tell them that Yulia Luptinskaya, a child she drove into an eating disorder, is a success of a diet story. Only Tuberetsi could do that. Yes, yes. Who says it doesn't pay to be a Satan minion? Naughty Teddy. Anyhow, I was really surprised to find them in fifth place because even though I'm biased, I am also fair. This team has really good technical skills. Their twist is really good. Their jumps is really good. Their side-by-side -side is really good. I don't actually get where 
the PC, well, actually, I do get where their PC score is coming. I know exactly where their PC score is coming from. It's coming from that Itari bonus, which is why she's the head coach, because she comes with that 10% bonus. Because while I think technically they're a very sound team, I don't understand where the judges find the PC scores to give them. But much like their performance at Junior Worlds, where they did not... Well, they, they mopped the floor. This was a repeat of that performance. And I'm just going to say, it seems as if Luca is preparing to blame the situation on Anastasia like he did his last partner. I really hope he stops that. Because he's not winning any goodwill by keeping throwing his partners under the bus like he's some great pair skater and it's these women that are bringing him down. I hope that's not where he's going. I hope he checks himself with that. Now, another devastation, another heartbreak was Sarah Conti and Niccolo Marcy. First of all, they were the last one to compete in the short program. And the short program was amazing. One of the best short program for pairs that I have seen in years. It was just one team after another after another building. And by the time they got there, we had seen so many great performances. I was like, what is Sarah and Niccolo going to do? But Sarah Conti and Niccolo Marcy came back in that short program and they did everything they could the twist was good and they usually struggle with the twist the side by side was like butter spins were on point lifts were on point throw legs extension for days they it was like the entire season got washed away with their short program at worlds and so I honestly thought, you know, and, and that put them in third place. So they were on the podium after the short program. And I was really rooting for them. I was rooting for them so that Italy could get that three spots that it so desperately needed. But unfortunately, it, it was just a series of small mistakes. That long program was just a series of small mistakes. And by the time it was over... Not only were they off the podium, but the combined scores between, you know, um, Sarah Conti, Nikolai, Niccolo Marseille, and Lucretia Bakari and Matteo Gorizzi was more than the 13 points that they needed to get an additional spot. It was two points. They were off by two points, and it was just devastating for them. However... On the other hand, my girl, Anika Hockey and Robert Canal, they did not come to play. I felt like they got robbed in the short program. They came in that short program. Again, every element was spot on. Twist, good. You already know when it comes to the lift, Anika is eating the air and leaving no crumb position on point. They're side by side, which is what she normally really, really struggles with. She got that done too as well in the short program. And then in the long, and yet the judges still managed to bury them, but whatever. They came back in the long program. Side by side was a little problematic, but after they got that out the way, the throws, oh, leg extension, the lifts, oh, the arch and Annika's back. The, and then you had Robert just being an ideal partner, being there for her every step of the way presenting her. This is a pair that I feel that is really well connected. They're really well balanced. He seems like more of a reserve person. She seems like more of the outgoing. And they just seem to balance each other so well on the ice. I was so happy to see this pair finish all the way up in fifth place. This was such a well-deserved finish, especially since they also suffered from injuries and had some difficulty this season. So it was great to see them finish so high. And then this is a pair that I, I have admit and I continue to admit that I have not really been pulled towards all season. And that is um, Maria Polova um, and Alexei Shrentnikov. They're a very solid pair. Their elements are solid. I would say that Maria's Maria and Alexis throw might be one of the biggest in pairs right now. 
that that throw travel and she lands solidly with confidence. They're side by side, also very good jumpers. Um, their their lifts are good, but for me, it's the in between skating that they lack. They really do not have the in between skating that I'm such a fan of, and it does break my heart that they. They have such solid everything else. And yet when it comes to the connection, when it comes to the musicality, when it comes to, I feel like the heart and the soul of the skating, for me, they just seem to, they seem to miss that. They seem to lack that. They don't really, they don't really have it. And that's really sad because I do feel like this is, this is a solid team. This is a solid, solid team. But I just feel like the reason why I watch skating, the joy, the fluidity, they just they just don't have. But they did very well here, coming from sixth place in the short program, climbing all the way up to the fourth place just off the podium. Making the podium at their first time at Worlds. Oh, by the way, I picked the top three in exactly the order that they appear to be. So I'm very happy with that. So our bronze medal here was none other than Minerva Fabienne Hayes and Nikita Valadin. I love this pair. Their twist is good. Their throws are good. Their side-by-sides are good. Their lifts are good. But what impresses me more about them is their beautiful line. These are very big, very tall skaters. They take up space. They skate big. And it's beautiful to watch. When they land something, you're like, oh, it's, it's impressive, big skating. And I love to see it. And more importantly, this is a team that I feel connects well with each other. This is a team that's very musically inclined. This is a team that's very emotive. That short program, mwah, absolute perfection for me. Every movement finish, every detail seen to. When she points her leg, she is pointing the topic of her blades and it is beautiful to see they are very well they are a very well matched team and it is so good to see and then in second place was Riku Miura and Ryuchi Kihara what a fight what a fight after such a hard season after such a hard season for them to come to worlds to try to defend their title and to put up such a fight yes there was a couple of little issues in the short program that rightfully put them in second place i completely agree with that i like this music for them like i said this is a happy go lucky you know youthful pair in these dark jerry dreary drab music they've been giving them i just feel like it doesn't do them the justice that they deserve but this short program music it's a, it's a light it's boyish it's joyous it suits them this is a very good short program for them and then they came out in the long program guns blazing they did not put a foot wrong they did everything they could. They were not going to give up this title without a fight. Unfortunately, even though they won the free overall, they did not have the score to take the title. But nothing can be taken away from the fight that they give. And then to learn that, you know, Ryuchi was in such a medical state after, you know, the free, the, the free program that he couldn't even make it you know, to the podium, he could not even make it to the interview. It it just showed you how much they put into this. They gave it everything they had, and it was beautiful to see. And I can't wait for them to come back strong, healthy next season and for them to fight to try to reclaim their title because I think this team can. But what I am asking, what I am begging for is to please package this 
team right. This team is so special and they do not deserve these drabby, dreary programs. They deserve to shine, to expand, to grow. So I pray that they have two wonderful programs next season. And then finally, Guys, you don't know how many candles I lit. You don't know how many prayers I sent. You guys know how much this narrative means to me. It means to figure skating, to have the one and only Queen Diva, Diana Stiletto, Dudek, and Maxine Deschamps as the champions here meant everything. Guys, I felt like so much of the dirtiness of figure skating, the corruption, the rot, it just kind of got washed away. Let us start with that short program. Donner moi. Donner the oxygen. I told you guys all season that song, other skaters need to skate to it. That song is a banger. And they banged it out. They did not set one foot wrong. You couldn't even breathe. And I watched it live. I watched this live and I could not even blink because I did not want to miss a moment of it. The throw, nothing but air. The side by side, oh, they fought for it. And then guys, the lifts, that Diana position, oh my goodness. She was here to slay it. She was here to kill us all. She was here to demolish us. She was here to take her crown. And Max was there as her executioner, making sure it went down the way it was supposed to. That has got to be one of my favorite short program competition for pairs in a long, long time. And then we got to the long program. We got to the free program. It wasn't perfect. It was not perfect. You could tell they were tensed a little. You could tell they wanted it so badly they could taste it. So it was a little shaky in places. But it was still their best performance of the season. They managed to do everything cleanly. And when it came for performance, when it came to the lifts, Every position Deanna was bringing it. Every position Max was solid, solid under her. Guys, I cried a little. I'm not going to lie to you. I cried a little. And the reason why is because of that narrative of Deanna being 40. When we have a sport where young women, where little girls are broken by 15, broken by 17, have had two hip surgeries by 18, are told to retire and go have babies by the time they're 19, to now have a woman who is 40, who was a single skater, who took 16 years off, who came back and is now world champion, that narrative to figure skating, a sport that I love but I sense is dying. That narrative means everything. You don't know how many prayers I sent up hoping that this is the narrative we got. And I could not be more joyous in my heart as a fan of figure skating because guys, before an individual a skater, before a federation, before a country, I am a Band of the sport and anything that can uplift the sport that could bring life back to the sport that is positive that is not harmful to the children that are in this sport I am a hundred and ten percent for so this crowning of Deanna and Max was the best that I could have asked for it was wonderful and so now for spare for like pairs we have Canada has three spots, Japan has three spots, Germany has three spots, then we got two spots for Hungary, two spots for Italy, two spots for Georgia, two spots for Australia, and two spots for the U.S., the U.S. having lost a spot. This is a wild idea, but let me just throw it out there. What would happen if Japan gave one of their past spot to Italy and Italy gave Japan one of their women's spot? Come on, let's be fair. We know we could definitely use four Japanese women at Worlds and we don't have 
three Japanese pairs to send. We have one, maybe two to send. So why not have Japan give Italy one of their pair spot because Italy desperately wanted and needed. And then why not have Italy in return give Japan one of their women's spot? Because come on now. Let's let's be rational with this. But anyhow, pairs, the only part about pairs that, that really broke me, that really destroyed me, was that Ping and Chang and Wang Lei, they didn't do so well. Not in the short program and not in the free program. Well, we are I already knew my girl Ping and those side by sides jumps was gonna be a difficult there was gonna be a difficult ask no matter how many candles that I burnt. However, that fall on the throw in the long program, no. That the throw, that's the that's Peng's bread and butter. That is the Chinese bread and butter. So to have had her fall on a throw, just oh, that was devastating. But I do hope, as Laurie Nichols say, this team has so much potential. There is so much there. So I do hope the Japanese Federation gives them the time they need to really, really grow. Now from pairs, we move right on to two men, the men's, the men's. Oh, the men's brought me such joy and such despair. Such joy and such despair. Where should I start? Let me start with some skaters who just did really, really well beyond what was expected of them. In 12th place, we had Mark um, Godofsky. This is such a lovely skater. Yes, I get it. He doesn't have quads. But he has such a beautiful, pure jumping technique. His jumps are just textbookly exquisite. And he's also very musical, very light. Everything about him is complete. His spins are complete. Step sequence is nice. This is just a really nice packaging skater. I don't think at this junction, Mark has what it takes to add a quad to his repertoire. But I still feel like this is a skater who's always going to be in contention because what he does present in terms of his triples are so well done. And then my first heartbreak was Alexander um, Solovsko. I so wanted him to have a top 10 finish here so that he could have two spots for Estonia so that him and his little brother could both compete at Worlds in the U.S. And he was so close, so close, but he's 11th, just one spot out there. This, unfortunately, I feel like European was his peak. He did a very good short program. It wasn't great, but it was good. And then he came to the, the free program, and he gave everything he could. He gave everything he could. But it just, it just wasn't quite enough to get him in that top 10 finish that he probably was hoping for. But I do hope, you know, next season... Both he and his brother come, they continue to fight, they continue to thrive, to try to get, you know, those two spots at Worlds. So I'm really looking forward to see what they bring, um, you know, next season. But a lovely skater with lots of potential. Oh my God, and then my heart just went right back to being destroyed. Because Junwa Cha, my Cha 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 Cha, baby, oh. The season had just been so rough for June with the injury and just the inconsistency. And unfortunately, the short program, I thought for sure, short program at Worlds, this was all going to change. I had prayed. I had lit my candle. This was going to be it. And when he went up on that quad, when he went up in the quad south, he looked so good. And then that fluke just fluke of a triple toe came out of nowhere and he just kind of it's like he went up and then he fell down like gravity abandoned him halfway to the combination of the jump and I was just devastated because now he would have to struggle to get back up to that podium back to his silver medal and I didn't want that for him I didn't want him to have to struggle back on the podium and then the free program came guys
He just looked tired and injured and the popping. Oh, but even through all that, you could tell the caliber of skater that he is. You could tell the class. You could tell the edge. You could tell the flow. You could tell the ice coverage, the musicality, the ice presence, his storytelling. Even with all the mistake, this is a skater that you want to be invested in. Honestly, I the, the next season is the season before the Olympics. And it's a season that's very important, a season where you have to build, where you create, you know, ideas in the judge's mind. And I think he has to go back to 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 um, Brian Osser and and Tracy Wilson. He has to because at the end of it, figure skating is very political. It's very appearance based. And having those two at the kissing cry or by the board with him creates the illusion to the to the judges that he's back at his peak form, that he's where he needs to be, that he's gonna build for worlds. I, I hope he goes back to Brian and Tracy. I, I think at this stage for him to really have a chance at the Olympic, at a medal at the Olympic, he, he needs all the help that he could get. Um, a skater that I was really happy, happy to see him skate so well is Nikolai Amamola. Again, this is a skater that's still trying to transition fully into junior. He is such a long, such an elegant skater, and he's still growing. You know, he's still trying to become who he's going to be. But there is so much potential here. There is so much musicality here. There is so much toe point here. There is so much to want to look forward to in his skating. And I was really happy to see him have a top 10 finish here. Unfortunately, you guys know I have a soft, a soft spot for Gabrielle Fag Fajapani. Unfortunately, the two of them combined do not have the score they need for a third spot. Which, ah, you know, Matteo Rizzi had his surgery. He's recovering. So that means next season we're going to have three Italian men fighting for two spots. And, oh. That could be so devastating in itself as well. So, but still, um, Nikolai did everything that he could in this competition, being, you know, his first major world competition as a senior. So it was really good to see. And then Cal Mura. Um, I do think Cal is a very good jumper. He's a very good technician. It's unfortunate that his jumps failed him here. And that could be due to any number of things. It could be nerve. It could be ad adrenaline. It could be over competition because the Japanese do have a lot of competition. Um, you know, it could be that he wanted it so much that his body tensed up, but whatever it was, unfortunately, this was not the outing that Kyle wanted. Um, especially not in the, the long program. He fought, but the damage was already done with all of those falls. So it's, it's very unfortunate. Cow is not a skater that I'm naturally inclined to, only because I'm not crazy about his programs or his packaging. The only program he had that I was really fond of was the Beauty of the Beauty and the Beast program because it was such a big music. He was skating big and it was more open. And I feel like he's probably the kind of skater he's so into himself that he needs big music to get him out. So I think where he goes from here is very dependent upon what kind of music he gets next season. Um, and then Joy return, Joy return with Dennis Vasiliev. Oh my God, that was a clean short program. How long have I waited to say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Dennis skated two clean programs. Yes, I know he popped the supported quad into a double axle. I don't even care. The rest of that long program, the rest of that free program was beautiful. This is how you do the Lion King. I said, yes, this is how you do the Lion King. You could tell he felt the music. He believed in what he was skating. This, uh, what, what am I going to rewatch again? 
I'm going to rewatch Dennis Vasiliev's short and long program. Why? Because aesthetically, to me, that is the kind of skating that speaks to me. That is the kind of skating that moves me. That is the kind of skating that I love. And for Dennis to have a top seven finish at Worlds. And the audience literally is telling the ISU, this is what we want, because this is what's getting the standing ovation. This is what we want. This is what moves us. This is what touch us. Unfortunately, the ISU has never listened to us, and I doubt they're going to start listening to us now. But, oh my goodness, a top seven finish for Denis Vasiliev. Just wonderful. Just absolutely wonderful. And then another highlight was Lucas Bucci. Not the outing he wanted at European, but he came back, and he came back fighting. And he delivered a clean short, and then he came back, and he went full out in his long program. I really do like this african theme long program for him. Again, like I've said, he's been to Africa. He understands the culture. He understands the concept. He enjoys it. And you could tell that he enjoys it when he skates. It was so nice to see. And then more joy. Oh my goodness. A top five finish at Worlds for Jason Brown and one of the most competitive fields out there. The short program, I will be watching over and over again. That standing ovation, well deserved. It was exquisite. Jason is what you call a skater's skater, a skating fan skater, because it is art on ice. Every movement is finished. Every position is held. Extension is extended. He hears and listens to the music. He emotes. He promotes. He gives you all the motes on ice. The spins, incredible. There is nothing not to love about Jason. The long program, yes, that, that damn triple axel. But everything else was just magnificent. And again... This is what's getting the standing ovation. This is what we, the skating fans, are telling ISU we want. Beautiful, beautiful skating. But from the joy of Jason Brown came the devastation of my baby, Shoba Udo. Oh, the skating gods were so cruel. After the most perfect short program Shoma has ever had, and I will say it, it was the most perfect short program Shoma has ever had. He actually did that flip, and that flip looked clean. I love you, I love you, I love you. He just did everything exquisitely well in that short program. Everything exquisitely timed, right to the finishing pose, every spin, the footstep sequence, exquisite, every jump, the best I've seen him do ever. He was the best in that short program, and that's not even based on my Shoma bias. He was just that good. And then the long program came, and I feel like maybe the pressure of three world titles just weighed down on him. I feel like the pressure of the technical battle that he was facing with so many quads and so many programs just did a number on him. And even though he fought, it just... It just wasn't there in the long program. And it just was not enough to get him on that podium, which was very unfortunate. So it's a pewter medal for my baby Shoma and a small short program gold medal. I don't know where Shoma goes from here. Does he want to continue or does he want to pursue the art form of skating? Does he want to move away from the sport and, and do more, you know, more shows, more program? Or 
does does Shoma think there's more to do? Even if he's not winning, maybe he feels there's more he still has to give to skating. Because I definitely believe there is more that Shoma could give to skating. Is he going to continue or was this his swan song? I personally, selfishly, would love for him to continue another season. But at the same time, whatever he decides to do, I fully support him in his journey to find his happiness in what he loves. And then, oh my goodness, amazing of amazing, Adam Sion Hemfa from 19, a disastrous disastrous short program. I think the triple axel was the only jump he landed in that short program. It was a complete and total disaster of a short program. But then we saw his mental fortitude. This is the mindset that makes a champion. We saw something similarly, I think, with Nathan at the Olympic where he was like 17th after the short program and like fought his way to win the free the free program overall, and then ended up fourth place to 17th. This was even more amazing because Adam went from 19th to second. That long program showed his strength of character, showed that this is a champion. He dug in deep and he fought and he gave us everything, landed every quad and then because he is adam he threw that backflip just for the sake of throwing it in there oh oh i am so looking forward to see where adam goes next season this is such an interesting such a unique skater with such a point of view and he's such a great storyteller that he takes us along on his ride and his journey and this was truly amazing this this long program especially in the context of what happened is one that i'm gonna watch again because to see him come back from that devastation, to see him fight back from that devastation, truly is amazing. And I will be watching that long program again. A well-deserved bronze medal. Way to go. Way to go, Adam. And then our silver medal is none other than the cutie pie himself, Yuma Kagiyama, he is such a cutie pie. I think for me, the cutest thing is Yuma and his dad and the kiss and cry. Short program, Yuma was flawless. I could not have asked anything more of Yuma. He was absolutely exquisitely flawless. His jump technique is like butter. The knee bend, the edge, the glide, the ice coverage, the buttocks strength. My favorite thing about Huma is that he is a skater that uses his glute. He uses his buttocks. He uses that muscle to get him up in the air and then to land gently, softly. He really has the most exquisite jump technique of all the men out there. It's just a beautiful thing to behold. And the long program was almost perfect. Almost perfect. But it's okay. Because, again, Yuma is coming back from injury. And they are playing the long game. I can tell that Yuma and his team are playing the long game. They're slowly, slowly building. Musically, he's so in tune. He's such an open skater. Such an expressive skater. Spins, step sequence, my favorite step sequence um, for the men, just lovely. There is nothing about this skater not to love. Everything is just so incredible that I, I, I know this is a champion in the making and I'm just waiting to see what path he chooses to achieve that. And then the winner here was Ilya Melanin. Now, at my prediction video, I forgot the name of the person who commented, but somebody commented that it seems unfair that we're always talking about how Ilya needs to grow artistically, but we don't talk about how some of the older skaters need to grow in terms of their 
technical abilities. And I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. But for me personally, the reason why I'm always hopping on Ilya growing artistically is because for me, I'm planning in my head to see Ilya in two, three Olympic cycles. And for me, for him to be that long-lasting champion that figure skating need, he has to be that complete skater. And the reason why I'm probably not as concerned about like other skaters like, you know, Jason or Dennis getting their quads is because those are skaters that I feel like already did what they wanted to do in skating and are now heading towards, you know, the transitional part of their career where they're going to do more shows and stuff like that. But for me, Ilya is part of that future of male figure skating. And I want him to be a well-rounded whole skater so that he could achieve that goal. And Ilya is growing. He is growing. No, nothing happens overnight. He is making these small changes in his tech score and his component. He is trying to be more emotive. He is growing. And I cannot take away from what he did. A six quad program. Absolutely amazing. And his quads look so effortless. That quiet axle, he just threw that in there for fun. All of his quads look effortless. But the thing about it is, is that six quad program, a program that I'm going to watch over again, did it get the kind of standing ovation that Dennis Vasiliev and Jason Brown got? Did that six quad program touch me the way those other programs did? Even the way that you must program touch me with a fall. And that is a preference Someone who watches Ilya and who's like, this is an amazing technical prowess. I have to watch this over and over again. And then there's someone like me who's like, this is amazing. This is history in the making. But I don't want to watch that whole program over again. I'm going to go to TikTok and watch the jumps individually. That for me is the difference that I want to, you, I want that gap to close for me and Ilya. I want to reach a point where I'm like, I want to watch Ilya's program over again. And I have yet to reach that point. But then again, he's so young. I'm not saying I won't reach that point. I haven't reached it yet. But he's so young and there's so much potential that I'm pretty sure he will one day. I just want him to keep working on it and not rest on just the technical aspect so that he does get to it one day. Now for the spots. So Japan, of course, retained their three spots with the fourth place finish for Shoma and the second place finish for Yuma that, that they were pretty safe. So they retained their three spot. The U.S. retains its three spots thanks to Jason Brown. Say whatever you want to say, but I think the smartest move that USSF has ever done is to keep paying Jason Brown to come to nationals and to go to world. If Jason is willing to come back again next year, you find the money U.S. figure skating and you pay Jason Brown and you send him to world. Because let's be honest, had you sent any other two men to Worlds, you might not have retained those three spots. Jason Brown got the job done. Say what you will, but Jason Brown gets the job done. So the U.S. gets to retain their three spots. France gets to retain two spots. Unfortunately, South Korea lost a spot. Um, so they get two spots now. They had three spots, but, you know, they get two spots Italy, we were hoping, would get three spots, but they also have two spots, with um, Swiss getting two spots and Latvia also getting two spots. All in all, even though I was pretty devastated um, by not only what happened to Shoma, but also what happened to Boyang Jen, he had been growing so much throughout the season that I had hope, I had hope that Worlds would be the payoff for everything he had done. Artistically, you could see the small changes that were being made in him. 
but unfortunately in that short program, I don't know what happened. His body just stiffened up and he could not land any of these jumps. Even the triple axel that he managed to land, that was a struggle. It was devastating to watch and he was crying in the kiss and cry and I was crying with him, guys, because we love our friendly neighborhood Spidey Skater. And it was so devastating, but I hope I hope that he's in the kind of environment where they will nurture him back and he's going to come back even stronger from this and he won't let this deter him. But all in all, guys, men, men was the hardest for me. It, oh, it, it, it was really hard. But from men, we now head right into... Ice Dance, Ice Dance, the most dramatic, the most political, the most cutthroat of all the four disciplines. It is the one and only Ice Dance. Um, I also guess the top three in the exact right position for Ice Dance. But let's be honest, that one wasn't very hard um, to do because the entire season it had been the same top three. So we more or less knew what was going to happen. So, of course, you guys know I have to rant. I have to rant because I always have to rant. <sighs> okay, I, I, I am biased because I'm human and most human beings are biased. But even though I'm biased, I do like to be fair. And so I do not believe the sins of the father or the mother should come down to the son or the daughter. And so I tried, guys, I really, really tried to be objective when I was watching um, Diana Davis and Gleb Smokin. I really did, guys. I really did. However, despite that, uh, I'm going to have moments. But let me get right into it. Um, you know, we had some, some to be expected. Um, Olivia Smart and Tim um, Dysk, they came out really strong in the rhythm dance. They have one of my really liked rhythm dance of the season. They looked really good. And then I think they just don't have the stamina, the practice, the confidence yet for the free program. That's really what I think happened there. Because I can't really explain what else it would be except that. But I've said this before, for me, this team is a long game team. I definitely want to see them at the Olympic. I want to see how much progress they've made, how much they've grown. I do think there is potential in this team. I want to see what happened next season, how they package, how much progress they've made, how much more coordinated they are with each other. I'm curious to see all of that. Um, then we had Tim, we had, um, um, Misato Kamasubara and Tim Coletto. Eh, they did what was expected. Their long, actually, you know what, their free program is quite lovely. Loving you is easy. Yeah, it's quite lovely. And for them to be like a married pair, talking about how loving each other is essential, it, it's quite lovely. It's quite lovely. Hallie Harris and Jason Chen finally, finally two clean program from this pair. Another pair that I think has potential but just has never shown it. This was the first time they broke 70 um, in the rhythm dance and it was really good to see. They came out here and they put in a solid free dance. Also good to see. This was another pair that I think is going to build and I'm looking forward to see what happens with them next season. And then, of course, one of my favorite, well, two of my favorites were back-to-back, -back, which is um, Yuka um, Ojeda and Juno um, Pereren. I adore Yuka because she seems to love skating. This pair, Yuka and Juno, seem to have so much fun on ice. Like, they are living for it. They have too fun program like she does madonna like madonna needs to be done she does 1930s like 1930s needs to be done this is the this skater these skaters are so much fun and i really hope next season the judges stop underscoring and burying them and then guys heartbreak heartbreak 
heartbreak, absolute heartbreak for Natalie um, Teshlalova and Philippe Teshler. You guys know I love this pair. I'm so invested in this pair, especially in Natalie. She is so strong. She is so fierce. They skate so fast, so deep with so much speed. Speed, so much conviction when they went into that split lift and her leg slip guys I cried a little I didn't cry a lot but I cried a little it wasn't show my level crying but it was still crying a little because I feel like the judges have been trying to bury this pair because they don't meet some kind of standard status quo but this pair is so good they're so powerful she reminds me of Madison Hubble with all that speed and power and the way they dig into the ice. Their programs, you know, were not my favorite. They're not packaging, they're not packaging this team well. But this is a team that has so much potential. And, and to have the short program happen to them, it was just devastating. They came back and they fought in the long program, but unfortunately the damage was done. But it, it was it was truly, truly devastating to see. And then my babies, Hannah Lynn and Ye Kwan, personal best. They were living that Prince rhythm dance. They were living it. And then, of course, without a doubt, their free program is my favorite program, bar none, of the season. Their connection with each other, their projection to the audience, their musicality, Hannah's extension, her face. Ye was acting right along with her. I adore this team. I want... Montreal to get behind this team and to push them to where they need to be because they are that good. Because they are that good. I desperately want them to get behind this team. And then another young team that I'm so emotionally invested in is um, Katharina Moskova and Danielle Muscav. So much talent, so much potential. At the beginning of the season, I was not really a fan of their free dance. The swan was not swanning for me. But by the end of it, at this junction, this program, they grew into it. One of the fastest pairs on the ice. One of the best skating skills pairs on the ice. My only concern for this pair is that they may not be with the right coaching staff that could politically pull them where they need to be because their line, their extension, their musicality, their edge, their skating skills, and all the ways that it matters. This young pair is it. This young pair is it. And I feel like they're going to need that political pull because Ice Dance is such a political beast. They're going to need that political pull to get them where they're going to be. Now, now we get to in 12th place, Deanna Davis and Gleb Smokin. I'll be perfectly honest, guys. I really, really thought, I really did. I really thought that Iteri Tuberasi was going to buy Diana and Gleb a, a, a fourth or fifth place here. I really did think that. But I guess once you don't have a whole bar barad of young, breakable teenage girls to take 40% from, there's only so much you could buy. I don't understand how Diana Davis and Gleb Smokin are ahead of Katharina and Danielle, ahead of Hannah and Ye, ahead of of Natalie and Philippe, ahead of Yuka and Juno. I, I, I don't understand how they're ahead of any of these teams. Because I will repeat, as I've been repeating, their programs are not good. Diana's skating skills is not great. So when you have a combination of not great programs and not great skating skills, I don't understand where the scores are coming from. I will say this because I try to be fair. They are very fast. They are a very, very fast pair. And also, those hideous Christmas reject costumes that they had for the free program, 
Thank God they got rid of them. Thank God they got rid of them. These programs are much better. They're not great, but they're much better than what they have. And then having to watch these back-to-back swan program, really watching Katarina's extension, watching the arch in her back, watching their skating skill, watching their edge, watching their control. Again, I have to keep asking, how are we judging? What is the criteria we're using? Because it's obviously not purely skating. And again, guys, I try to be fair while I'm being biased, but it's really, really hard because Diana Davis and Gleb Smokin are benefiting from that 10% Iteri bonus. They are benefiting from her being Iteri's daughter. And even though I want to separate the mother and the child, it's very hard when it's clear to see the benefit of being her daughter. I will leave my rent there. Then in 11th place, we had the um, French team, Lucia de, Mon de Mongat and Theo Le Mercier. There's something about this pair that I'm trying to get my finger on. There is something there, but I'll be honest with you guys. I didn't love either of their program this season, so I don't really know how I feel about them. But there is something there, something sensual, something. There's something there, guys, but I can't honestly tell you. They have good skating skills. Their programs were okay. Nothing great. Um, And then we got to one of my favorite free dance of this season, which is um, Yulia um, Tequila and Mateus Velus. Their rhythm dance, it, it hasn't been strong all season. It has not been helping them all season. It, it was another repeat here. Unfortunately, the free dance, which they do so exquisitely, also failed them here. They were so nervous, they were so tight that the fluidity that they usually have in this program, the connection, the, the freedom wasn't there. You could tell they were tense in their twizzles. You could tell they were tense in some of the lift and some of the in-between skating. And that was really sad to see because I really wanted them to end with this program on a high because this free dance is such a beautiful program. I'm very curious to see what this team comes up with next season because they have so much potential. And then in ninth place was um, Lawrence fournier Boudry and Nikolai Sorensen. Oh, Lord. Um, that, the Twizzles did not go well for um, Lawrence. Literally just fell out of the Twizzle. Um, not my favorite free dance from them. Do not like the Notre Dame de Paris. It, it just didn't do anything for me. So all in all, a ninth place finish for them. Um, Yevgenia Laropova and Jeffrey Bassad. I love their rhythm dance. I love their rhythm dance. It's so quirky. Like it just, this, that rhythm dance grew little by little over this, this season. While some other programs were just deteriorating, this program grew. It was so quirky. It was so unique. It was so outside the box. Everybody was Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, Prince, Michael Jackson, Madonna. Not them. Not them. It, it was just such a joy to see something so different and so unique that I absolutely love it. Their free dance is pretty generic. Like, the free dance is pretty generic. You could put it on any other pair, and it would be just as generic as any of them, which is kind of sad because this is a very unique team, and I wish that I wish they would lean into their uniqueness, into their individuality, instead of trying to fit into the mold. But I do understand why they're trying to fit into the mold, because the ISU reward that mold. They know what's going to get them the points they need. And that's unfortunate, because I think this team could be quite special standing on their own. And then right above them, right above them, is Christina Carrera and Anthony Padamorenko. The political push for this team is real. I mean, not only did you have Scott Moyer by that board, but listen, Madison Hubble was like, I'm going to have to leave my baby and I'm going to have to come stand by this board because we're going to get this job done. 
the political push for this team is real. I think without a doubt now we can officially say they are the second U.S. pair. Like, the, the, ISA, the Dance Academy of Montreal is not playing. Anthony and Christina are officially the second U.S. pair team. Now, having said that, having said the political machine is fully behind them, that's not to say they're not a talented young team, especially Christina. She is a beautiful skater with wonderful extension, wonderful posture. She's very emotive, very musical. Um, Anthony, not so much. Not so much. But then again, he has had injury. He had had surgery, which probably limits his mobility, his motion. And they're young. This is a very, very young team. He still has time to fully heal and grow. She has time to even become stronger. And I'm hoping, I am hoping that they find that thing that is uniquely them and that Scott and Madison can help package them to truly be that next level skater that they are trying to be and then yay a top six finish for allison reed and salus and brevis and brie visi amber versi okay I'm going to give up on that name. But guys, I'm such a fan of that team. I think they pick such unique program for them. I think they are so underrated. I think they match so well. I think they have such beautiful line. I really, really hope she gets that citizenship so they could go to the Olympic. There was just so much to root for for this team. Yes, this was not the level that they had at European, but then the circumstances were also different, but still two really good performances at Worlds under pressure. I cannot wait to see what this team does next season because I am invested in this journey. And then of course, the joy, the unabated joy of the return of my Lala Capo, Marjorie Lajoie and Zachary Lega. My babies are back. Marjorie looks healthy. And to me, you guys know, skating is just a sport. Health is the most important thing. And to see her out here looking healthy, to have them be wise enough to understand that it's not about the short term, but about the long term, to give themselves the time that they need to heal and come back at 100%. The thriller, they thrilled me. One of my favorite rhythm dance of the season. The season. It could have gone so wrong. It could have been so, oh, another Michael Jackson program. Oh, it's thriller. But from the costume to the movement, to the commitment, to the music, they were there 100%. And then their long, their free dance, spellbinding. This shows you how versatile this young team is at such a young age. To go from a thriller to a more classical theme and do it seamlessly as if you were born to it is truly amazing. More amazing is how close Marjorie Lajoie and Zachary Lagarde was to that fourth place, how close they were to that pewter. Now, what I want to know is, is Canada going to put all of their political power behind Marjorie Lazois and Zachary Lega? I said this years ago when they were coming out of junior that this was my pick of one of the teams to be on worlds in Olympic podiums. And Olympic podiums, um, how long are they going to have to wait to get on those podiums? How long? I don't think very long. I don't think if, I think if Canada has its way, not very long. And then in fourth place were fan favorites, Lila Fear and Lewis Gibson. Um, again, I don't think this is a, a team that has the best skating skills, that has the most speed, that has the most ice coverage. But I do think this is a team that understands what the audience wants to see. They understand their strength, they understand their weakness, and they understand how to play to their strength to the maximum. 
and they do this here so well both in the rhythm dance and in the free dance they kind of sweep the audience along with them and that in turn sweeps the judges along with them this is a very good very proficient team at what they do and so it was really good to see them here on the pewter and then oh my gosh this was such a hard break um for charlene Gennard and marco fabri i feel like what happened with charlene and marco is that after the rhythm dance which they were fabulous in um i think this rhythm dance suits them so well I think they kind of got in their own way where they were like, the gold is not outside of our reach. We maybe could win the gold. And they came real hard at winning the gold and they kind of tensed up. Their opening lift where he flips her and she goes on his knees, they usually do that lift effortlessly. It's nothing. There's no, it's seamless. You don't even see the transition. It was a struggle. It was a struggle. Um, Marco Fabri literally had to save that lift so that Charlene Gennard didn't fall. And the rest of the program was also a struggle. They were tense. They were tight. It was almost like they wanted it so much that their body started fighting against their mind. And so they went from like a silver, you know, in the, in the, um, and the and the rhythm dance to a bronze and the free dance so they were not able to defend that silver medal win from last season but again this is a team that is very proficient this is a team that is technically the best in the competing field right now they have great edge control they have great knee bend they have great spin even though it didn't serve them at this competition, their lifts are effortless. Um, Marco is able to get right under Charlene and support her like it is nothing. They are not a team that I always find to be well packaged. They are not a team that I always have programs that suit them. I love Barbara Fusapoli. She's outspoken. She fights for her team. I do think she needs to look for outside help with the packaging and the program because this team does have a lot of potential, but the packaging and the program limits them. But still, a bronze medal here, not a bad outing at all. And then we got to our silver medal, which is Piper Gillis and Paul Poirier. Their rhythm dance, I feel like I'm one of the few people that really like this rhythm dance. I really enjoy their rhythm dance but I did not enjoy their free dance. It was not a, a free dance for me, even though I love the Withering Height music. That is until this performance. It was as if them being in third place in the rhythm dance, seeing the scores that, you know, Marco and Charlene got, seeing the, the scores that the leaders had, they just were like, you know what? We have nothing to lose. Let us just skate. And they had the skate of their life and they had the performance of the night. I believed in the weathering height. This performance made a believer out of me. It was effortless. There was no nerve. There was no shakiness. They owned the program. They lived the program. They breathed the program. They birthed the program back to us. And I was like, behold, behold, this was what I wanted from this program every, the whole season. I could not take my eyes off of them. I barely breathed. I was this emotionally invested because they were that emotionally invested. Mwah! The performance of the evening and the free dance and rightfully winning that free dance rightfully winning that free dance and then our winner overall was madison chalk and evan bates they were fabulous in the rhythm dance they were so confident they were so self-assured as always madison was selling you sand in the desert and you were buying it like it was gold and as ever 
Evan Bates was there to showcase her in all of her glory. They were the rightful first place winner of that rhythm dance. They rhythmed it like it was nobody's business. And then we got to the free dance. They were tight. They were nervous. This was, even though they were sick at nationals, I still felt like they gave a better performance at nationals because they were fighting at nationals. I feel like they did not come here to win the title. They came here not to lose a title. And those are two different mind frames to be in. I feel like they were so conscientious of the fact that they were first in the rhythm dance. They were so conscientious of trying not to make a mistake because they made a mistake last time they won world that the freedom, the free flowing, the joy that we originally associated with this beautiful program, it wasn't there. It just wasn't there. Their bodies were too tight. Their vibes too enclosed. The program just, it lacked the, the sparkle, the bejewelment, the bedazzlement that it normally had. But overall, I do still feel like they were the winner when you combine the two. So they were the rightful winners. Now I am wondering, so now we have the U.S. of course with three spots, Canada with three spots, Italy with three spots, France got two, um, the Brits got two, Lithuania got two, and now the Finns, Finland also has two. Did the Czechs get two? I'm not sure. If they got two, because they're 15 and 13, that's 28. I think they may have two. What I am wondering now is where do these skaters go from here? The top skaters. So for a long time, we were we were hearing the rumors um, that Gabriela Papadakis and Guillaume Cizeron were making a comeback. But guys, I saw Guillaume sitting in the kiss and cry with more than one team. It feels like Guillaume has, has had, you know, his titles, did the Olympics, and maybe he's not transitioning to his next career, which is as a choreographer, maybe as a packager, maybe as a coach. I, the vibe that I was getting from him on the Kiss and Cry was not someone who was getting ready to make a big comeback. That doesn't mean they won't announce they're coming back. I just didn't get that vibe from him. So now if... Um, if Guillaume and Gabriella do not come back, what happens to these skaters? Like Madison Chalk and Evan Bates, yes, they had two world titles, but neither of those world titles were won amazingly. Last year they had a fall. This year they lost the free. Is that enough motivation for them to be like, let's try to get another title and this time do it convincingly, both in the rhythm and in the free dance? Or are they like, we've had enough. It's time for us to get married. Let's have some children. Let's move on to the next part of our journey. And then you also have Piper, um, Piper and Paul. Wonderful win in the free dance on home ice at a home world. Piper having just fought cancer, you know, probably valuing life more than she ever did. Are they also going to be like, we're content with what we have? Or are they going to be like, we're so close to the Olympic. Let's keep going. We already know Charlene and Marco said they're going to keep going. They've already said it because Olympic is in Italy. They're not giving up on that. We know that Lila and Lewis are going to keep going. But what about those two spots what happens there and how does things change the the distance between lila and lewis and marjorie and zachary is next to nothing do we see the flipping next season or is the flipping going to be lila and lewis flipping either piper paul charlene or marco or madison and evan like what is going to happen I'm so interested. I am so invested. I want to see it. I want to see it. Even though pairs, even though ice dance is probably the most political of all the discipline, it's also one of my favorite. There's so much drama. There's so much intrigue. There's so much beauty that I just, I, I want to see, I want to see more. But guys, I'm not looking forward to the theme 
for next season. I'll be honest with you. Honestly, I thought the 80s would have been a fabulous theme for Rhythm Dance. But then we found like everybody was so limited. The choreographers were so limited. We got a whole bunch of Elvis. We got a whole bunch of Michael. We got a whole bunch of Madonna. We got a whole bunch of Prince. And most of them were not very good. And now we have Dance Party. Is it 40s, 50s, and 60s? Or 50s, 60s, and 70s? I don't even know. But Dance Party... It's as if the ISU refused to learn. It's like they're so desperate for that viral moment, even if it means sacrificing the discipline itself. Like, what the hell is dance party? This this is going to be a nightmare. This is going to be a hot mess. I, I'm, oh my, oh, not looking forward to this, but I hope, I hope I'm proven wrong. But all in all, enjoyed Ice Dance so much. And now for the... Women, the women, guys, I don't even know where to begin. There was so many wonderful performances, so many maddening performances, so many all over the place performances. I don't even know where to begin. I will begin with my favorite, which is Josephine um, Telgerad. First of all, Josephine made the, the long program at Worlds with a fabulous, absolutely fabulous short program. Yes, she only had a triple-double, but who cared? Her presentation marks should be so much higher, and these stinking judges continue to play my Josephine and the PCS score. Josephine is the reason why I know, I know for a hundred percent fact that the judges don't know what the PCS score is for. Because if they did, Josephine would rank amongst the top in the PCS score at all time, at all time. Um, then, you know, we had Madeline Trizard. This has been a very, very difficult season for her. I'm pretty sure she's relieved to have it done. She, she fought. The short program was difficult. The long program was even harder. But she fought. You could tell this was not, you know, a program where she gave up. She fought through the whole thing. Um, Laureen Charles. Oh, my God. Her jump technique scares me. It excites me and scares me all at the same time. This is not a musical, musically inclined skater. This is a very... She's going to muscle the job. This is definitely a muscling the job, getting it done. But then again, she's so young. She's so young. And so I feel like the potential for her to grow is there. The potential for her to maybe get a little refinement, soften the edges is there. Um, the Nina, um, Pel Nina Petrokina, girthy skater. You guys know I am thirsty for a girthy skater, and even though Nina didn't do so well in that free program, the short program, Nina showed us potential. She showed us jump that meant something. This girl has power skating, power skating, and I want to see more. Yes, you could tell she didn't have enough stamina. You could tell she was coming back from injury. You could tell that the the free program took a lot out of her, but still, there was so much potential there, and I and I really want to see more. Um, and then the other Nina, Nina Pinzaroni, unfortunately, you know, I think she took a fall, and her nose would not stop bleeding. That's quite awful because she was having such a upward trajectory, especially at European, and I'm pretty sure this is a very devastated way for her to end her season but again she's so young she is so young and there's so much for her to to you know learn and grow but i will say with her short program i finally know why i don't like it and that's because the program and the music do not go together like the actual choreography if you watch the choreography as you're listening to the music it does not go together i really hope you know she Nina is growing, and I hope she doesn't box herself in, but instead tries new choreographers, new choreography, expands her vocabulary, um, you know, of figure skating movements. Because I, I just don't feel like these two programs really helped her as much as they could. 
Um, Olga Nicotina, you could never count out Olga. Very respectable outing here for her. Oh my God, poor Anastasia Gabanova. You know Anastasia's growing on me. And not just because I read in a comment that she said the Eat Daddy girls were using drugs, but because you could tell there's a fire un in her that she is trying to keep a tight lid on that I want her to release. It was so unfortunate. Oh, the, the, the short program was so unfortunate. She had been pretty consistent this season um, with her combination and the double axle, so, you know, and her solo jump. She had been so consistent. And I don't know if it was the pressure. I don't know what happened after doing very well at European. She just came here and it, it just didn't work. It just did not work, which was very sad. And then, of course, and I forgot her in my prediction. How dare I forget you, you young, in my prediction. But it's okay because in that short program, you made me remember that Triple S, Triple Toe was like butter. You were giving us personality. You were giving us musicality. One of my favorite short program of the competition. And then the free program started off so well. Your triple-triple combination had so much speed, so much height, so much power, so much travel. I just, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. So it was like from 5th to 14th place. The, the jumps, maybe it was a lack of concentration. Maybe it was the pressure. I'm just not sure what happened. But... I still think that that short program was amazing. And I hope instead of focusing on the long program, you, you focus on that short program and then you build the long program because the short program was truly amazing. Um, a very happy, happy story here was Ekaterina Karakova. After the disappointment at European where she did not even make the long program, it was so good to see her come here in the short program. Yes, Anastasia does not have, um, I mean, Ekaterina does not have the triple-triple in the short program. And that has always put Ekaterina Karakova at a disadvantage. The fact that she does not have that triple-triple in her short program. But what she does have is a lackability both with the audience and with the judges, that does carry over well. Her jumps are tiny. They do tend to be under-rotated. If she can work on getting her rotation, I feel like Ekaterina can easily be a top 10 finish skater at any of these competitions. But it was so good to see her have a clean short program and an even cleaner long program here. And then we got to Amber Glenn. I don't even know. I feel like we, the skating fandom, want to give everything to Amber. The judges want to give everything to Amber. But for some reason, there is something that is blocking her path. And, and, I, we, we, and I don't think that's something we could solve. And I think that's something only Amber can solve. In the short, in the short program... Triple, triple combination was beautifully done. The triple loop, which is an easy jump for her, she went up and came down. She went up and came down and then came back in the free program with a beautiful triple axel. And that first few jumps in that long program, I was like, yes, yes, yes. And then the popping. I, I don't know. I don't know what is keeping Amber from her most glorious self. And I hope she's able to figure that out because there's so much potential. But still, a 10th place finish at World is, is not horrible. It is very res respectable. And then we had the first of the two Swiss women with um, Livia Kaiser. I feel like she was, she, the, again... A ninth place finish at World, not a bad finish at all. But I felt like she just had a lot more oomph at European. I think probably maybe fatigue, maybe excitement at being at her first, you know, World Championship. The short program was very good. 
and the loan program was very good i just feel like it was missing that special something that she seemed to have so much of at um european and then we got to two of the Japanese women. First and ninth place was um, Hana Yoshida. Uh, I again, again, I am not sure how we can get Hana to do two clean program. This is a skater that's a very unique, very interesting program. You guys know I love her short program. I love her short program. I love the movement in her short program. I love her skating skill. I love her speed. But the consistency in which she delivers is what needs to be worked on. Because I she could have easily meddled here. But neither the, neither the short or the fee program were clean and so at the end even though she has what it takes to be on the podium she still finds herself in eighth place and then we move on to Mona Sheba which is a similar story that short the the jump just kind of like the pop just out of nowhere it was almost like her body relaxed too soon and then it couldn't tense up to get the three rotation that she needs. But this is a skater, for me, probably the best spinner of the competition. Beautiful skating skill, beautiful presentation, wonderful jumps when they're on, but that is it when they're on. We have yet to really see Monet give us two convincing program back to back where we could be like, yes, this is it. But then again, Again, these are very young skaters, so we don't know what's going to happen next season or the season after that. So the potential is still there, but just the the delivery is just not quite happening. Um, so she found herself in seventh place when she could have also been a medal contender. And then the heartbreak, the heartbreak, guys. Hyen Lee. Hyen has had such a difficult season, all season. That when she delivered that short program, a short program that I believe she should have been in first place for because her jumps were the only ones that were actually clean. That short program, I'm so happy she went back to the Siren short program because it is so beautiful. And she delivered it so beautiful. Oh my goodness. Her jumps are... Mwah. I feel like the South Korean women have the most beautiful jump technique right now it, it looks big it looks expensive it looks important that's the kind of jumping that Hyen gave us in that short program and you know Hyen is all about that step sequence eating it up by the time she ended that short program ha in front of the judges I was like yes this is it I was ready to give her a medal and then I think when the long program came, it was all of the doubts from the long season. It was the lack of self-confidence. It was a, an issue of stamina. There was just so much there that she just couldn't replicate what she did in the short program and extend it to the long program. Uh, it, it, was, it was really heartbreaking to see. It really did break my heart um, to see... Um, high and Lee in that long program. I hope again that High End takes the short program and build on it for next season and doesn't focus mainly on the long program. That's what I hope for High End. And then, guys, really my performance of the competition in the long was Kimmy Rippon. The short program was going so well until that single jump, doop, down she went. And it was so sad because you could tell that even from European to Worlds, that Kimi Rippon has grown some more. She is now very tall, um, very lanky, and I feel like she is on the verge of becoming a very elegant, very fluid skater. Yes, the jumps are a little under-rotated, yes. She has to grow fully into her body, yes. She has to re-solidify her jump technique, yes. But 
Her presentation is immaculate. Her musicality, her awareness of her body, even though she doesn't have full control of it, her awareness of the audience, of the judges, all of these are things that cannot be taught that must be innate and inherent to a skater. And I feel like Kimmy Rippon has that. And I feel like once Kimmy Rippon gets full control of her body, she could become a wonderful skater. And then another heartbreak was um, Luna Hendricks. I didn't know Luna was competing here injured because, oh my God, she came in that short program and she sold it. I will admit that I have not been a fan of her programs all season, but she sold that short program 110%. Should some of her jumps have been called? Absolutely. But you know what? Sometimes you get the double espresso judge. Sometimes you get the night quill judge. Her tech caller was the night quill judge. Other people got the double espresso text caller. Regardless of, you know, the jumps that should have been called, every aspect of this program was sold 100% and I bought what she was selling which is why it was kind of devastating when it came to the long program. The minute she set foot on the ice and she went for her triple triple opening and she doubled the first triple in the combination, you already knew that the fight was not there. She did the best she could to salvage what she could, but the fight that we saw in Luna at European it was not there at Worlds. I don't know if it was the pressure of being in first place and having others chase her down. I don't know if it was because of the scores she had heard from the competitors that had gone before her. I don't know if it was simply the injury. Whatever it was, you could tell this was not Luna at 100%. And it was so sad because she had delivered so well in the short program. But all in all, you know, a fourth place finish is, is nothing to sneeze at at Worlds. And then the surprise medalist that I did not see coming, the little firecracker herself, Cheon Kim. Yes, in the short program she came, she was Alan. But unfortunately for Cheyenne, she had the double espresso tech caller judge. So she got ding. And I feel like her PCS scores is never what they deserve to be because the little firecracker is always giving it. But I will admit she's not a very emotive skater. She doesn't give us a lot of face, but her body is always giving us everything. So I didn't feel like she deserved to be in sixth place, but they put her in sixth place. But my little Shayon came, came back in the free program and she told the judges, if you want to bury me, you're going to have to come with several shovels because I ain't going down without a fight. And that was one of her cleanest performance ever. She did not come to play. She came to slay. I'm so looking forward to Cheon because she's so young and just so cool, calm, and collective. Nothing ruffles her. She's got a job to do, and she is here to do her job. Do not get in her way. She's, she's fast becoming a little favorite of mine. And to win a medal at your first Worlds is amazing. Congratulations to Cheon Kim. And then we got to the second place, Isabel Levito. Now, I have said this and I'll continue to say this. Isabel could be that skater. The skater that the U.S. is so desperate for. The skater that ISU is so desperate for. She could be that skater. She's endearing. She's cute. She's adorable. When she finished her short program and she was on the ice like, oh my God. You felt for her. She's pretty. She's presentable. She's articulate. She's everything that the skating world is looking for to upheld as a skater. She's also very musical. She has beautiful positions. She has good spins. But guys, as much as she's adorable, even that adorableness is not enough to take away the reality of her jumps. Those jumps are atrocious. And for you to watch these skaters back to back, to see such pure, beautiful jump technique, and then to see 
Isabel getting the same GOE or better as the skaters. It makes no sense. And this is not about Isabel per se. It's about a jump technique that we know is no good, that we know is unattractive. And to have the ISU continue to reward it means to have coaches continue to train it, means to have skaters continue to practice it. Yes, I, I mean, I'll be perfectly honest. I personally think her jump should be given negative GOE. Guys, she is practically touching the ice when she goes into the jumps. The lean is that bad. And this makes me sad because everything else is so lovely. Thank God they decided to change the short program, the ch snack charm or whatever it was with that heavy drapey gold dress was not doing anything for her. Everything that's light and fluid and, and just youthful about her was being hidden under that program. This program is a lot more fluid. It's a lot more musical. It's a lot more light. And the outfit is also a lot more fluid and a lot more light. It gives her more range of motion. She could move better around the ice. And the same thing with the free program. Thank goodness they changed that horrendous gray, grandma shredded drape dress, which was heavy and weighing her down. The new black dress is a lot lighter. But again, guys, those jumps, those jumps. Oh, my God. I want to be invested in Isabel. I really do because there is so much about her that appeals to me. But those jumps, guys, I, I, I can't. I can't. And then our winner here, the one and only, three times world champion, Miss Kairi Sakamoto. I have to say, I'm not going to lie, guys. In that short program, Kairi looked a little out of it. She looked a little tense. The, the only jump that was completely 100% secure was the double axle because she has a beautiful double axle, a wonderful riding edge, so much ice coverage, so much knee bend, so much depth. The rest of the jumps were a little shaky. The rest of the program, the step sequence, everything was a little shaky. I feel like the enormity of what it means to be a three-time world champion was finally catching up with her. Um, you know, and, and she felt that in the long program, but because Kawi is a champion, because she's a fighter, because she's well prepared, because she knows what she's capable of, we had her come out in the free and fought. Now, yes, were the judges generous with her in the short program? Did they give her that champion bonus that kept her in contention? Of course they did. Of course they did. It's not the first time and it won't be the last time. But did she come back and redeem it? Did she tell them, yes, this is why you give me that bonus. I'm going to show you good skating. I'm going to show you beautiful jumps. I'm going to show you knee bend. I'm going to show you ice coverage. I'm going to show you glide. I'm going to show you a champion that knows how to dig and fight when the fighting needs to be done. Kaui came for her title and took that title. That title was not given to her in that free program. She took her title in that free program. And that is what I want to see. Champions coming and taking what is rightfully theirs. And out of the four disciplines, Kaui was the only one who came and said, this is my house. This is my title. I'm about to be a three-time world champion and she took that title. Don't play with my girl Sakamoto. And even more than that, to have a woman be in first place. Again, guys, you know every video I make, I harp on the same thing, which is longevity leads to champion. Champion leads to growth in sport. Winners, they do nothing for sport. And Kaui is building up to be a champion that we can all get behind and push. And I'm here for it. All in all, guys, I really, really enjoyed Worlds. I don't know about anybody else, but I personally really, really enjoyed Worlds. And, and what I love is that I'm not exhausted. 
normally in the past, especially when Iteri had her bevy of, you know, breakable winners, after the season was over, I felt exhausted. This season, I don't feel exhausted. I feel hopeful. I feel joyful. I can't wait to see what's coming next season. And I feel like that's what we need in the sport. We need joy. We need hope. We need things to look forward to. We need the sport to not traumatize us. I want the drama, not the trauma. I'm not about the trauma. This is drama for your mama. Ain't nobody trying to traumatize their mamas here. So it was so good to leave the season feeling not exhausted and feeling so hopeful. I had a blast watching Worlds. What about you guys? What prediction did you make that came true? What did you enjoy at Worlds? Which discipline was your favorite? Which skaters surprised you? Let me know all of it in the comments below.